Hello and welcome. Today we're working on Excel, things you did not know it could do. It can pull stock prices, foreign exchange prices, crypto prices, including uh, geography things. So let's get started. Let's say you're making a trip. You're planning a trip maybe in the summer to Mexico, and maybe you're planning a trip in a year or two to Europe. So one thing you care about is maybe the currency and what the currency price is. So here I've listed all the ticker symbols for the Mexican peso versus the US dollar and so on. So here's what we want to do. You need to go to the data ribbon. Now if you have the modern XL 365 then you have now currencies and geography and stocks and things like that. So we'll, we'll do currencies. So it's recognized, you see these are all currency symbols now. So you recognize that these are what they call data types. You see this is data types in Excel. And what that has the ability to do is do searches and pull things like what is the name. So the name is the Mexican peso versus the US dollar or the US dollar versus the Mexican peso. I'm going to show it both ways and you can only have to think of it one way. So for example, I typically think when I go to Mexico, one dollar buys 20 pesos or so. Um, I don't think of it the other way, but you certainly can. The other thing we can do is pull, you know, what's the currency? So it's in US dollars or in Mexican pesos. And then we can pull, it's from what currency? So this is from pesos to dollars, right? Or from um, dollars to pesos. And so what's the price? And so the prices are inverses of each other. So the price, if we say uh, $1 buys 20 pesos, then what is one peso worth? Well, it is one over 20, and that's about five cents. And then we can do the 52 week low, and we do the 52 week high. And you see I've built a table for this. And so you can see, well, during the year, if you're, if you're planning this summer to go to Mexico, during the year, it's gone from around 19 and a half pesos to 21 and a half pesos for every $1. So you can see, how that's going to affect you if you use dollars to buy pesos. Now let's look at um, a euro here. Well, a euro, uh, in fact, we need to change this to, it'll actually pull, let's do this, yes. So it'll pull the, um, the pound symbol and the euro symbol. So it says, look, for one dollar, to buy one dollar, it's going to take, uh, 74 pounds. Po I'm sorry, 0.74 pounds. So a pound is worth more than a dollar. If you do it in dollars, then one pound is worth a dollar 35 US dollars, right? So that's how you start looking at it. Now, the other thing you might want to do is say, I want to get a little bit of demographic information about the countries, maybe uh, Mexico and then the countries in Europe. So here's what we do. I just typed out some of my capitalized, some of them I didn't. Sometimes I might make a, a spelling error, and so that we'll see how that works. So we're going to do geography, and it's going to recognize all these countries, and there's a little map, so it says, hey, this is a data type, and you can look at currency. So let's look at the currency. So you say, oh, okay, Mexican pesos, Great, um, uh, Great Britain pound, right, the UK pound, euro, and then Switzerland has the uh, Swiss franc. So that's going to be a different currency if you go to Switzerland. So let's do the population of these countries. So the population would be, one hundred twenty-six million in Mexico and eight point five million in Switzerland. And let's pull the capital of each of these countries, or capital or major city. You see, it takes just a minute. And so then we have here are the the capitals of these countries. Now, do you see there's a map here? So this is also a data type. So we can pull information about, about Mexico City or London or so on. We can do population. We can do a time zone. Uh, looks like Brussels maybe um, hasn't pulled anything here. That's fine. Sometimes it's not perfect. We can do the time zone. And so that way you know, hey, is it going to be the same time zone, different time zone, whatever. All right, so that's how you do maybe a trip planner pulling foreign currency and pulling uh, geography things. Now, you may not know we, we have uh, 
cryptocurrency, so I did two, Bitcoin and Ethereum. So let's highlight these two. This is also gonna be uh, currencies. So we'll say, hey, what is the ticker symbol? And we just did the ticker symbol, but, but that might be helpful for you. There's the ticker. So you can see what that is. It's Bitcoin in US dollars. The name, the name is going to be Bitcoin to US dollars or Ethereum to US dollars. And we can say um, the price. We can do the 52-week high. Uh, do the 52-week low first and then the 52-week high. And then the last trade time. So the last trade time is, um, now this should be in uh, dates here. So we'll adjust this. So it is, today is November the 10th, 2021. And this is GMT time, Greenwich Mean Time. Um, so that's 1438. Let me check what is the time. So uh, 1439 is the time. So it pulled within the last two, couple of minutes. So that's pretty amazing. So today's date, you might want to put today's date here. So you could do um, today's date, and that way you know, hey, when is this? So the next time you pull this, you could um, see what the price difference would be. Now, so Bitcoin is right now at 68,000. That is close to the all-time high. I'm not the all-time high, but the 52-week high. But the 52-week low was 13,900, so about 14,000. So very volatile. Um, we're at very highs right now, but if you watch this video in a year or two, it might be completely different and it will be completely different. We do know that. Let's do stocks and we'll kind of wrap up this little video. So let's say you have a stock portfolio and here are the companies. You just typed in Ford and Google and Tesla and so on. Um, Coca-Cola is KO. GE, I think that's going to be uh, General Electric. We'll see. Facebook, Apple, Cracker Barrel, the restaurant, and T, I think, is AT&T. So let's do this and see what we can do. All right, so we're going to do stocks. It recognizes everything. Um, now, Ford, the symbol is not Ford. It is actually um, F. So let's do the New York Stock Exchange. And Facebook, let's see what we can do for Facebook. All right, I don't see it, so let's let's scrap that. I don't know the symbol, uh, ticker symbol for that. I could look that up, but let's get rid of that. We don't need Facebook. All right, so I deleted Facebook, ha ha. All right, so let's pull based on this. Well, now we have stock symbols here. So what is the year that it was founded? That's kind of neat. How old are these companies? Year incorporated. So some of them are really old. Ford is 1919. General Electric is 1892. Um, and then Coca-Cola is 1919. Ford and Coca-Cola uh, incorporated the same year. That's kind of fascinating. So the ticker symbol is F or Google for G-O-O-G. -O -O uh, Google is really alphabet. It recognized that Google um, would translate into alphabet. That's the name of the company now, and they incorporated that in 2015. Google is older, but alphabet is, is not quite as old. So we're going to look at the price. We're going to do the 52-week high and low. 52-week, uh, oh, I guess I did the high first. All right, 52-week high first and then 52-week low. And you can do other things because it's a company. You can say, well, how many employees does it have? It'd be nice to know how many employees they have. Well, um, AT&T has 230,000 employees. Cracker Barrel has 70,000 employees. All right, so let's do uh, one more. Let's do the industry. And so, you, you know, you might, if you're doing a project, you're trying to figure out a couple of companies, what kind of industry are they in? Well, we've got all sorts of different industries, okay? Well, what if you want to change, and, and let's see how this works. You say, look, I'm going to swap out Ford for HCA. So I'm going to type in HCA, Hospital Corporation of America. And what it does is it pulls all the information. All this is brand new 
search, it's no longer Ford. It's all the new information for HCA. So you can build a template and you can use over and over again. It's going to pull uh, recent data. Now, the other thing that's really cool about this, you could say, hey, I'm just going to purchase for HCA, I'm going to purchase, you know, 100 shares. And you could take the 100 shares times the price of 246, and that's how much would you would have. So you can pull information, and then that information, you can do math on it. So it's pretty fantastic. So this is all using data types, stocks, and currencies, and geography, and um, that's how you do it in Excel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.